Good morning, everybody. I am the first one up. I think Zach's arousing now. I went out and checked the lines, and there's uh, just one strip. So, find the best luck if you're going to try to catch a fish is the first person. Because you get to check all the lines that we have set up overnight. And then you get to stand around all the lines by yourself until somebody else gets up. So that's what I'm doing right now. I've got seven lines to watch. They're all mine right now. This is my best chance to catch a fish, I find. And you get the early bite too. So I've got my purple purple snowsuit on. Uh, word is that there's another suit, suit coming. Not that I don't like my purple suit, but there might be an upgrade in the works. Uh, Zach was talking to a couple sponsors, so I might be able to switch over to that and get a fresh set. And I don't see if it's any warmer. This one's from the 1990s. There's a story behind it I left on the other video. It's my dad's snowsuit, and uh, I haven't wanted to give up on this snowsuit for, <laughs> for a long time because it's, it works really good. If you're just joining us on the series, there's an earlier one where we set up this cool cave shelter deal right behind me here. Camoed in, you can barely see it, but uh, it's just a set of shelter or a set of tarps set in the rock face there, and it kept us really nice and warm. Today we might move on to a bit more adventure, maybe pack up the winter tent. <laughs> the bear has ari arisen from the den. <laughs> the cave shelter. It's not too cold. No. Pretty nice out. Yeah, I mean it's not raining, so that's a plus. These boots, I'm surprised. I thought they'd be putting on like really, really cold boots, and it would, but I guess because they're just What's so much insulation in them, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that we're dry in there too, right? Yeah. It might so have dried out a bit. It was warm in there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, no no lines down. Just the one miss. And that was up. Yeah, those ones are always supposed to be that way. Yeah, that was up before. I don't know. Is it supposed to be like that? No, no. That's That one bends down like that one. It oh. springs up. Oh, well, maybe that one is worth a check. This thing's a freaking beast. It, dude, it's massive crappy. <laughs> Look at that slab. Holy cow. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> it's such a big. Holy cow, which one was that one on? That was on yours. Oh, the auto. <laughs> Holy cow, how big is that? I don't know. It's huge though. What do you think of that guy? That's incredible. Well, I'm just. We got a, uh... Oh, we got to measure it. Holy sh... <laughs> What's it, 14? 15 inches almost. 15 inch... <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> almost 15 inch crappie there. That is crazy. First thing in the morning. On the true grit. Yeah. Look at that. The walleye rod. Oh, it swallowed it. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's right down there. So, dude, how'd you sleep? Slept pretty good. Yeah? Um, it wasn't cold at all. No? Which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, slept all the way through the night. Had to get up one time to use the restroom, and other than that, it was good. The restroom. The restroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beautiful restroom. <laughs> the beautiful outdoors. The hardest part is waking up. Yeah. It's true, right? It's just, I don't know, it would have been easier if I was cold, but since I was so warm, I didn't want to get up. Oh, there. so it's yeah. the reverse. I yeah. feel like I'm cold in the morning, and I don't want to get colder. Yeah, no, I was like so warm and just cozy, so I don't want to get up and like feel yeah. elements. But I had to get like up to pee, and then I'm like, oh, it's actually late out. Might as well fish. Yeah. I just get I get my snowsuit right on right away and then go for a walk. Yeah. And then the blood float and then it doesn't feel so bad. You gotta yeah. just like jumping in the water cold. You just jump outside cold. <laughs> it's harder it's a lot harder to do this um from like I don't know, I feel like it's if you warm and you go outside it's okay, but if you're cold and you go outside it's colder. Yeah, it's it's, it's worse. Brutal. It's it's definitely the hardest part. So let's see if we catch the fish. What's the yeah. plan? I think I think we need to move. Yeah. What I mean, is it, it's nice to, to stay here though. I know, I right? Because it feels like home now. But there's no fish. I mean, no good fish. I mean, there's there's good, actually good fish, but crappies, wrong kind. I just don't think there's enough of them. Like, no, we've only caught two. Yeah, we've really fished this whole area for a while now. I really do want to check out that flat in there, and then I don't know if today's the day we make a venture to new lakes or if we just stay on this lake. Well, we could just try a new spot on this lake. Yeah, I think right? that's what we do. That might make sense. 
I don't know, it's up to you, like whatever you think, you're the fish expert. We're not marking fish here, so yeah. we gotta do something. We gotta do something. Something difference has to happen today, 100%. A cup of coffee sounds nice. Yeah? Yeah. Zach will get on it. Yeah, do you like coffee or not? I'm not a coffee guy. Not at all. No, so you're relying on Zach. Oh, okay. Yeah, he'll get it. As you say, he engulfed it. 39 hours. 39 hours engulfed. Yeah, he engulfed it. What's his name? The fish? Yeah. <laughs> you guys pick game names? I'm not far, that far in the series yet. Drying off the old gloves. These are wet, eh? Yeah. Mine are still wet from yesterday. These aren't good ones. Leather. Kind of nice just to get warmed up here by the fire. This is a huge luxury when you're out here. To have dry space, a really hot fire. It's radiating heat off the rock face here. So if you haven't seen the last video, go check that one out where we kind of organized this from nothing. It's moving. She's moving. She's moving. Oh no, it came off. Really? Yeah, it came off. Our fish head soup broth there with the taters in it, full of flavor. Yeah, that thing, we fired it up till it steamed last night and then took it out and then fired it up again until it steamed this morning to heat it back up and it's like, taters are soft, the broth is good. Where's the stuff? <laughs> oh, you want some stuff? Yeah, I want some stuff oh, in there. Uh, that was hard. That's more of a process. I just got broth. Yeah. Oh, can you not get all the way down the bottom? There's potatoes in there and it, No, I can't. Fish? You just gotta, Chopstick them out of there. Oh, look, look, look at that. Taters precious. Nice. It doesn't taste fishy. No, right? No, it's good. Yeah, it's perfect. So that's um, Zach threw what? You threw fish, uh, adobo, potatoes. Did I miss anything? Onions. Onions? Celery, celery? butter. Oh, the whole works. Garlic. Garlic. Yeah. We just to get some fish at the bottom, it's probably all disintegrated, right? Like the bones. That's the idea is to make a really thick broth. Throw in the rest of the um, fish uh, that we caught and eat all the skins and bones and everything. It's good, hearty. Oh, oh yeah, okay. This could be the lake trout we're looking for. Maybe. Feel bigger? It's hard to tell. It's got some weight to it though. That's not that big. We'll see if it, oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there's a bubble. That's good. It's gonna freak out. Where is it? This is big fish. Take your time. I think it's a big one? Take your time. Yeah, there it is. I see it. It's a laker. Oh, it's a crappie. Nope. Oh no, it's a laker. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not a laker, but it's a laker. Oh, look at just barely hooked them too. It's in there, but just barely. So that, that was the same, but little lakers, we're still gonna eat them. You gotta. Is it 18 inches? Oh. What do we need? 18? Yeah. I'm not gonna make it. 
Nope. nope. Oh no. Bummer. We gotta let them go? Yeah. Alright. Back in the hole. <sighs> Bummer. First one. Well guys, it is the end of an era. If you have been following along my channel, you know that uh, this snowsuit here, this purple snowsuit, was handed down to me from my dad. It's from the 90s. It's a really old snowsuit. It works fine. Um, but at some point, you gotta let go. So Zach actually set us up with a sponsor, Striker. They sent us some new stuff. And I'm not gonna get rid of the snowsuit. I'm gonna hand it down to my son. He can wear it until he can afford to get some more expensive stuff. So we've got a full kit. We've got the pants, the jacket, and a knit beanie, I think we called it. Knit beanie. We'll call it a knit beanie? All right, let's call it a knit beanie. I'll call it a toque. So I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna let my 1990s snow pants go. They're not as waterproof as they once were, so they do get wet over time. And actually before the trip, I had to get some coins out because they got through the pocket, the breast pocket here. There's a hole in it, so stuff falls down into the foot and I had some change and I said, 100% we gotta get this out. So my son helped me get it out. So he's gonna inherit these down through the generation. So I had a good, had a good run with these, probably use them for 20 years. 20 years could run out of a pair of pants, but yeah, gonna upgrade. We're gonna get warmer. What do you guys think? Am I a sellout? No, I'm improving my life. I, uh, I'm getting better at this whole life deal. You know, I'm working hard and making these videos and other people are noticing, including sponsors. So I take advantage of it. Makes sense to me. What do you think, guys? It's pretty warm, looks pretty comfy. You have to get used to the new me. Not purple anymore. A little bit more stylish. Well, the boys are all out fishing, so I figured I'd stay back. I got this delicious giant crappy, pretty big slab, 15 inch slab. So I'm gonna go actually right over here. Well, it's not too far from the shelter. We've got some really interesting rocks. Um, it looks like kind of a shale. It's all kind of breaking apart up in here and there's all different shards falling off and the stuff is like super, super sharp. So what I'm curious about is if I could take a piece of this, gut the crappie and actually prepare it to eat. I think that would be pretty neat. Um, there's a cool one I found the other day. It's got like a hook point there. I think that would be neat to try to get up in the gut of the crappie and then pull it apart. I don't know if I'll be able to debone it and fillet it uh, to the specifications that you would get from, say, a knife, but it's worth a shot. The edges of this stuff is all super, super, duper sharp. So maybe we'll grab a couple pieces here and uh, we'll get a nice flat spot and we'll see what we can do. See if we're actually able to clean up that crappie using some stone. Well, we ended up with a couple slabs. Um, gotta be honest, I mostly used a knife. 
these uh, shards of rock are simply not strong enough. <laughs> they do not hold an edge and they are not sharp. So, uh, knife for the win on that one. Better luck next time. Modern tools. Boy, this lake is a super, a super slow. Can't believe I drove eight, nine hours to be here. Not naming names, Zach Fowler, but the action's been as slow as it is back home. I'm really surprised that I'm not getting some lake trout just cruising through here every once in a while. And I'm on the board. I'm on the board in a good way. I have so far crappy, a bass, a rock bass, and a lake trout. <laughs> I've got I've got the biggest of all four species, I think. I think. Only lake trout so far. So the boys are out in the middle. They're trying to catch up. So I'm just doing home chores. And uh, honestly, I'm enjoying just a little bit, a little alone. Not because of any other reason. It's just it's a little quieter. And I've got some chores to do here. And also I've got six lines here right now. They took one with them. So they're trying to, there's a little a hump in the middle uh, where they're hoping that the lake trout are kind of coming up on the edge there. Or maybe we'll get into some more crappie or something else. We really don't care what we eat, but it'd be nice to get a big fat lake trout, you know, three pounder that we can all get a bite into, put some adobo spice on it, would be pretty cool. I did want to show you guys the setup that we have here. In case you haven't watched the last video, we got this big rock face. We are actually on the lake right now, so we could drill a hole here. But as you can tell, we've got basically three tarps. Uh, one, two, and the third one over here. And then we've got a cot. This is for Alex. And then Zach actually hung his cot from the tree over to the other a post and that post is not an actual tree he actually chipped in the ice and anchored it down you can see the cantilever over here and then i've got my cot over on this side so we're using the cots during the day just for sitting on and this rock face here is reflecting all the heat back to us and then we haven't had any issues at all with the smoke the smoke's actually coming up straight up over here so while it looks like we're completely enclosed this back wall here is actually functioning like a chimney and it's drawing the smoke up and out and away from us so that when we're sleeping here we're all smoke free so it's working out really nicely the only really big main issue with having a fire on the lake itself is that you tend to form a puddle and then you can't build up a nice coal bed but we've figured out how to do that too so we've got a log down here laid down on the ground and over time that soot and ash will build up but eventually it'll combust completely so we'll have to get some more but we're laying some pine logs down below and then we're building the fire up on top of that and that's holding that coal bed and we found some really awesome hardwood i may take you guys up there right now and go grab some because we're getting pretty low on it and we have to drag it down that's the big chore really is getting the firewood and hauling it back down uh, to where we are so i think i'll do my part they're out fishing collecting food hopefully and uh, I'll keep the camp ready so that when they come back we can uh, we can dine on some grub. There's an alternative just to use some rocks, but we get some bigger bigger shale pieces maybe and build up a proper bed because eventually those logs are gonna burn through. All right, let's go fetch us some firewood. We need some more hardwood. Probably get another sled full because that'll last us. The sled full lasts us a whole day. Wood selection here is absolutely crucial, especially in the winter time. You gotta pick stuff that's uh, dry, first and foremost. And second of all, it's gotta be, well, it should be preferentially hardwood. 
Incidentally, if you guys want these Boreal 21s, they're available on my website, thewoodabeersman.com. Hit shop, you'll be able to find it. So I'm, I'm eyeballing this one here, which you call dead standing because it's up in the trees, which means it's drying all the time. And it's in a fairly open area, which means the sun can get at it and over time season it. So when you put wood in a fireplace at home, you season it. It has to sit for a year in the sun and the air and circulate it and let it dry. We don't obviously have that kind of luxury out in the forest. In the wilderness. So what we have to do is look for stuff like this. This stuff is dry to the touch. The inside of it uh, is 100% dry. The outside of it might be wet only because it's raining. But once this outside dries off, you've got perfectly seasoned wood. Let's fill up the sled. It's a little slippery here. I wonder if the boys are getting them or not. The fire's gonna restart. We've got a bed of coals enough to heat everything up and it's drying here. Maybe I'll go out and have a walk. Go visit Alex Perrick, AP Bassing. He's a big fisherman. He's the ringer. Take a walk out to the middle of the lake here, catch up to him, slush everywhere. It's been a little bit on the mild side. There's water just accumulating everywhere. It's really dangerous to be camping out in this kind of weather. Not for right now, but for when the weather changes because eventually it's gonna get cold again. And if you're wet, when it changes, you're in big, big trouble. That's when hypothermia sets in. We've got a pretty good setup. We don't have to worry about hypothermia because not only are we smart, but we're prepared. You guys think it's safe over there? <laughs> There's one there, one there, and one more over here. I'm gonna stay away from those. So I thought you were a parrot because you, you knew fancy equipment. <laughs> they look too, they're too, too shiny. Look too sharp, Yeah. too sharp. Yeah. So, what's the news? Am I am I striking? Yeah, striker. In my striker. <laughs> well, look at this. Talk about striker striking. Yeah. He ended up with a bass. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna eat that guy. I saw a couple more on the the aqua view down here. This is a, a like a little high ridge running along here, and there's a I, I could swear I saw like a pumpkin seed or something. Could be. And then uh, maybe a couple more bass and. Perch, They're just kind of cruising. Oh, there was definitely some perch. Yeah. Uh, Parrot caught a perch and another, you know, had almost had another one. And I had a bite on and it was pulling it up and probably another bass that size. And I said another one over here with the minnow where it gets about 30 feet to see if uh, 
maybe the um, Lakers. Lakers pushing up some of these smaller stuff onto here and nibbling on them, but no luck so far on something better than a bass. Yeah. Perix actually way down there. I'm not walking down there. <laughs> It's That's a slow too slow walk, isn't it? I know. You sink in. Slushy. Yeah, you're sinking in three inches every step. Yeah, it's a lot of work. A lot more work than I expected. It's exhausting. Well, we got the perfect, perfect cooking fire on here now. They kind of die down to coals. Bacon's a tricky one to cook on the fire, but we got only because once it spills over, the grease goes everywhere, and then you lose your grease and it catches on fire. Oh, not quite a sizzle yet, but close enough. So we got some bacon. We're gonna add our uh, crappy that I cleaned earlier. And uh, gonna give uh, Alex, he's the only one around. Zach took off next time, looking for some fish. And I want Alex to try the Wadobo spice to let uh, me know what he thinks of it. Maybe I'll turn him into a fan. He, if he doesn't like it, he'll be the only person who doesn't like Wadobo spice. And that's a fact. I've heard nobody say they don't like it. And I've also heard nobody say they don't like it on specific things. So if you guys have tried it and you don't like it on something, let me know what you don't like it on. Waiting for that bacon to keep going. It's almost getting there. I want a nice pool of fat you can put the fish in there. Kind of, I'm feeling it for AP, Alex. He's a fisherman and he hasn't really gotten onto a ton of fish. He did catch a perch uh, on his trip up that way, but that's not enough, man. It's been tough go. Tough fishing, that's for sure. Yeah, you ready for a ta taste of heaven? Should be alright. Shouldn't be too too hot. It's all it's hot, but not too too hot. Crappie, bacon, adobo. Oh my goodness. What do you think? You nailed it. Perfect? Perfect. Right on. I love the spice. Grab a piece of bacon. It's crispy. All right, we're gonna give this a go to fresh crappie right on the lake. No, oh, it's good. Yeah, so good. It's like eating butter, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Grab another piece. Right. That's the real test. You want another piece? Oh, yep. Yeah. That's like eating butter with wadobo on it. <laughs> I'm so in focus right now. It's like I've just been struggling. He's in tune now. I think it might be the lake, not the fisherman at this point. Like we've been oh, soaking lines. For sure, for sure. We've been soaking lines for 30 hours and we've caught like four fish. For sure it's the lake. There's no question about it. Man, that's good. I'm glad we allowed ourselves to bring some extra things like bacon and potatoes and stuff for the... Man, potatoes would go really good in that bacon right now. So I am going to finish all this up. I feel like I disturbs Alex's groove, but maybe that'll get him going again. Not sure if you guys have ever gone ice fishing or not, but this to me is ice fishing. You sit back, you bring a chair, always bring a chair ice fishing, because there's no place dry to sit unless you do, or you should bushcraft one. And then get a big stack of wood on your sled here. Put your feet up like this. Lean back as far as you can. 
And hopefully there's a little bit of sun out and you can get a sunburn because you're not going to tan, you're going to burn. So bring sunscreen, which you always forget. So just be prepared next time to deal with it and just relax. How you cried out a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> you think if I put a hole there, you'd, would you be upset? No, you should. We could both watch it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool, man. Yeah, so right there is eight foot of water that way. Yeah. And that's eight foot of water that way. Yeah. So See? is it, is it, it's just like this dimension though? I'm like, you it, could also see him coming in that. It's, it's mostly a huge cone. It's a cone. Yeah. Okay. But you're also kind of pointing, like you, you do have a focus area. Right. And that's so you, you see what so if a fish comes in this eight feet slot, you'll see them? Yep. Right, because it, it'd have to be 3D to be able to see in the other dimension. The Z. Exactly. The Z. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that technology just yet. No. We will though. I'm sure we will. It'll yeah, be. A, the fish it'll won't be, a, be able to stand a chance it, soon. It'll be a camera, and you'll just see everything. It'll digitize it. Like digitize underwater. It'll be like a Google map of underwater. Of underwater, <laughs> yeah. And then it'll track all the fish, and it'll draw them in, so that you can tell how big they are. It'll tell you how what the weight. And it'll tell you exactly what they want to. <laughs> <laughs> Aggressive or um, finicky. I'd love a Google Maps uh, underwater of this lake and see if there's actually fish in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we uh we don't even know if this lake is a stocked lake or we have if no it's like clue what this lake is a natural lake that would help and when it was stocked how many were put in here i seem to think it's it was probably a natural lake at one point now it's stocked that's my guess yeah look at all the white out on this thing i know i read something um on this like i didn't do much research but i read something that you can only fish it in like three months out of the year this one? Yeah. So that's why I was like, oh, this is going to be really good. It was like from January to March, and then there's like a small time you could fish it in the summer. Hmm. So maybe it's a natural like them that they're trying to protect. Yeah. Cool. Everybody's back. Zach had the best luck today. Yeah. What'd you get? I got, I got perch. A mess of perch? A mess of perch. One, Five perch. Two. Bass. Bass. Oh, a smallmouth? Perch. Is that Perch. a... Looks uh, like a smallmouth. No, no, no. No, it's a large one. Yeah. I just colored up. Right. And there's another perch in here somewhere. So we got a fish fight going on, it looks like. Yeah. So that's a that's a, that's a a win-ish. It's not the lake trout we're looking for, but it's, I mean, it's food. Yeah, but, that'll do good. Yeah. So... We'll do something again. Something, something. A little something, something. Something, something. Some tater. We, we already had a fish fry. You, huh? you missed it, sorry. Oh, you fried some fish? Yeah. I fried my crappie oh, up. Oh, you fried your crappie up? <laughs> Alex still got his perch, so... You can eat without me, I can eat without you. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get this fire going again so that we have some heat for the night with our beds. So, uh, I actually managed to get it back. Uh, I wasn't sure I would. Alex got me a couple twigs to toss in there. Trying to give it some gas. without passing out. I think uh, we got the heat back going again. I don't know if you can tell, but it's lots of smoke like this and you have a fire that's kind of, it's been going for a long time. It's got enough latent heat in there to catch. Oh, barehanded. Barehanded fishing them out. They're fitting, fitting right in now. Now we're bushcrafting. Bushcrapping. Stick it right in there. Rinse your hands off. Oh, lost that. Well, we are reboiling this water. Add to the flavor. Mm -hmm. These perch are oh, a pain in the neck yeah, to scale. Absolutely. Like everything else that we've gotten out of here so far scales. I've never tried to scale a perch before though. To get the most out of it, you scale it, but holy cow. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get a divorce, you you scale inside your house. <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen sink. Because they go absolutely everywhere. And they will stick to everything too. Like they'll stick to the floor, you'll never get them out. Yeah, we gotta like uh <laughs> They're just going all the way towards the potatoes, too. <laughs> well, that's a warm and rewarding fire. Sure is. 
So we got some potatoes on the go. We just fished them out while actually Alex fished them out of the fish soup so they would be nice and tender and fished, fisherized. We can always throw some more potatoes in there. Just don't want to wait forever, so we're going to fry them up. And uh, Zach's outside, he's cleaning uh, the perch, scaling them, scaling some of them. And uh, I don't know what he's got planned, but definitely fish fry and potato fry. I mean, what else are you going to do? Looks like it might be as simple as that. But it's nice in our cave. I'm liking the cave. Feeling like, feeling like I want to stay here, but I think Alex wants to go someplace else. I don't know if we're going to move camp, but we can, uh, we can do a foray somewhere else, get some pike, come back. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what shakes out. Maybe we'll just quit. You wanna quit? <laughs> no. No, you're good still? No, I'm still good. All right, cool. Glad to hear it. Always checking in with the crew. Um, if you're running a crew of guys and you have a new guy, make sure the new guy's good. And uh, then you'll be good. Cause you gotta, you're part of a team, right? So things start to break down. You should know early enough. And then you can probably, you can adjust and fix it. So I think that's kind of key. Um, as far as getting along with other people. Uh, life lessons, right? I wouldn't say I necessarily followed that my entire life, but here we are. Something, something I've learned anyway. Maybe, maybe you guys out there listening too will think of that and consider other people. Just makes for a better experience for everybody. I got an itchy head. I keep itching my head. I don't know why I'm itching my head. Oh, I know why. It's because I have this toque on for like two days straight. <laughs> it didn't even air it out at night. <laughs> Maybe I had to do that a little bit tonight and just air it out. Let the hat breathe, the head breathe under yep. the hat. You have a toque head by the end of it. And I'll feel naked when I take it off. You're done. I'm done. <clears throat> Brutal. Uh, you want more? All right, there you go. Thanks. <laughs> I feel like a city folk would not like that part of the the, flavor the bottom bit. part? Yeah. Oh, man, right now, though? Yeah, I know. Right now, yeah. A layer of bacon in the bottom. And all of our fish. There we go. Third course. Put that on the fire. Courtesy of Zach, he prepared a huge four-course meal. We started off with potatoes. And then we moved on to asparagus and onions. We also got a fish frying up and mushrooms. So we're eating pretty good. You guys are probably seeing that now through B-roll, because that's just the best way to do it. And I don't have to eat anything cold. So, I'm gonna finish this off and tuck in for the rest of the night. Uh, it's not bad. Fish, this is fish egg from the perch. Fish egg right here, guys. Let me know what you think. You're good, you're good, I got you. That was pretty good, not gonna lie. <laughs> was it, did it taste yeah. like a fishy chicken egg or no? No, it didn't no? taste like that. It tastes like nice. I don't even know how to explain that taste. But I always think it tastes like grits. Yeah, grits, grits with some udoba. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice. There you go, sold. And you weren't gonna eat it either. No, now every time I catch perch, I'm gonna have to eat the eggs. <laughs> and, and, and the milk. No, oh, that's your no, challenge. no, I'm not doing that. Challenge. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fish eyeballs? No. <laughs> fish guts? I mean, we've got fish stew going on, which is... It's crazy how much, how wasteful, I'm not going to say Americans, but Americans in general are with like when it comes to fish, and how watching you guys flay them, eat the eggs, and then throw it into a soup to make a soup, crazy. Yeah, eat the skin. Eat too. every skin. Never eat the skin before either. Best part. Yeah. Fatty. Yeah. Tastes like bacon. It does. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Awesome. New way of life. We're about ready to hit the sack. It's only like nine o'clock, but uh, there's not much to do and pretty much get up early and work all day, so we need to sleep. So uh, everybody's pretty much settled in. We got the two cots same. Zach's up in the hammock, if you guys can see over there. I don't know how much you can see at all, but uh, we had a bit of a smoke issue. It's not, uh, well, it's swirling tonight, so it's we're trying to get it directed up and out. 
So we've got the door blocked off, or the doorway blocked off, hoping that will help things a little bit, stop it from squirreling. Squirreling and swirling in our faces and we don't die from smoke. It's not too bad now. I think the wind actually died down, so that might be to our benefit. We cut a bunch of wood, it's all set to go. Alex is itching to go to bed. He usually goes to bed at 2 or 3 a.m. Now he's like in, tucked inside his bed, 9, 8, 9 p.m. Oh, I usually don't get up till <laughs> noon. <laughs> but now we've got work to do. That's right. A whole nother adventure. So this is going to be maybe the, maybe the last night in the cave. I don't know. We'll see. Got something planned for tomorrow on the next big adventure. Um, Zach's got another harebrained idea. Yep. Um, that's going to involve a lot of work, which is pretty natural for <laughs> what we do. I, I have a hot tent in my car and I can go sleep in it anytime. It's got a wood stove and everything. You guys have seen it before. So I might pull that out next or maybe another time. We'll see. We got to figure out what to do with the fish. Fituation. The fishuation. The lack of fishuation. Yeah, the fishuation is bad. It's real bad. So, I don't know. We might not fish at all tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway, stick around. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, John boy. You're going to wave? See, see, people hey. see where you are? Good night, folks. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And, you know, stay, uh, stay, stay outdoors, man. Fowler out. Fowler out. <laughs> go check out uh, AP. I'll link all those guys. Definitely don't go check me out. Yeah, you check them out. <laughs> don't subscribe to AP. He doesn't like it. No, send them some positive vibes because uh, we need them back making fishing vlog videos and etc. I'm back. He's back. He's back. He's gonna do some. He's gonna do some catching cooks maybe, or maybe some bushcraft. We'll see. See if if any of the things we've done wears off. All right. Good night. I'm done talking. See you tomorrow.